All right, before we went to the commercial break, Paul Zeiss hit something I didn't think he was going to hit. He is agreeing with James Harrison that Le'Veon Bell should stay out until week 10. It's a business. Guaranteed money awaits you, and it could be a lot more than what he would make here. Interesting. I want to get both Will and Chris's uh, opinion on that. Will, uh, would you, I, if you I saw think that, that, there's no job that Le'Veon Bell is going to make. We don't know if he's going to be healthy in three years. He's healthy now. If I can make 850 grand a week now, I make 850 grand a week now. Especially if I think, and as I think he proved right when he saw what Todd Gurley's deal was, he's going to get his money if he has a, a, a standard Le'Veon Bell season. How about if he gets hurt? Oh, yeah, I'm sure he's got insurance policies out against that just like everybody else would. I mean, I think, I think if he gets hurt, though, that's the best argument to come in and play and because he'd have $4 million extra in the bank, say, you know, if that were to happen and he wasn't skipping out these games. Here's the other thing. I could see, actually, where Paul is coming from, and I can't believe I'm saying that actually out loud right now, but Le'Veon Bell last year seemingly took it as a point of pride to prove that he could stay healthy through an entire NFL season. It feels like as defiant as he is about not wanting to, he's not going to report, he's going to do things his way. He also, I think, feels he has something to prove by playing these games, by staying healthy. And there's never a guarantee that teams aren't going to hold this against him, whether that would be fair or not. And it would probably be unfair if he were to sit out several weeks. All right, now I want to get into something else. Paul Zeiss, I want to get your take on this division. Many people believe it's a lock for the Steelers. At least they're the uh, big favorites in here. Do you agree with that? And just overall your thoughts of where they are, you know, pros, cons, tell us about what you think their strengths, weaknesses are, and give me a record. You, you, wait, you asked if they were a lock for the division? Yeah, a lot of people uh, think uh, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know lock is the word I would use, but it, I think it would take a lot for them not to win the division. Um, I, you know, obviously Baltimore is always Baltimore, and those games are always very close. But to me, the Steelers clearly are the best team in that division. Um, I just have to see what they have on defense. I know that they were really good. Uh, you know, the, one of the preseason games, it looked like they were really good on defense. And, you know, everybody celebrated, hey, we're back. I got to see them play a few weeks before I'm ready to say that their defense is at a championship level. Because let's face it, that's really how we're going to judge the Steelers this year, what they do in the playoffs. Whether they're 12-4, and 13-3, and three, or 11-5, and five, I don't think it's that significant. What do they do in the playoffs? I think they're a 10-6, and 11-5 team. They won a lot of close games, as was well documented last year. The bottom line, though, as far as the division goes that Ben Roethlisberger is still very clearly the best quarterback in the division. And I'd be maybe more inclined to get on this Baltimore Ravens hype train, but for the fact that I still don't believe in Joe Flacco as, as a guy who's going to have some sort of renaissance season. And they just lost Jimmy Smith to a four-game suspension. That's a big name in that secondary that's going to hurt them badly, including one game against the Steelers, mind you. I mean, I think last year we were talking and we were boiling the regular season down to basically the Patriots game, right? Saying that's all that really mattered, and it ultimately kind of did in terms of determining what happened in the playoffs. Um, for me, I think it's a step backward record-wise. I think, I think the schedule's harder. I mean, you've got to go to New Orleans, got to go to Jacksonville. you still got to play the Pats. I think tenants, they're still the most talented team in the division. They need to know Anthem stuff, know Facebook Live stuff. Everybody's kind of got to shut up and play football. I think, you know, I think Marquise Pouncey said that it's time to win right now, and I think this is it. I think this is the last great year, best chance the Steelers have during Ben's career to win a Super Bowl. So I think they're going to win the division, but I see them maybe as the third seed in the AFC. All right, now it's time to go around the horn for this week's Smooth Moves, brought to you by Pittsburgh's largest supplier of the smoothest granite, marble, and quartz countertops. That is Armina Stone. So, Smooth Move for you, Paul Zeiss of the week. What would it be? Well, I would say that I'm going to go with Trace McSorley. I know that, uh, you know, Penn State struggled or whatever they did with Appalachian State. The bottom line is they won the game, which is all you really want to do in week one is survive. But more importantly, that guy just seems to know how to make plays when they need him. They, and he, he you know, obviously he did it again. Um, to me, you ask me who I want in college football as my quarterback, I go with Trace McSorley. Will Greer. Will Greer's nice. Um, oh, here we go. All right. So for, <laughs> I would say, look, I'll, I'll counterbalance that. Kenny Pickett. No, no, Jersey throughout, he doesn't have to be Kenny Perfect. Look, they were playing Albany yesterday, but he looked the part in the first half. He looks like a kid that's going to be have this job for a couple years, and we'll see how good he really is on Saturday against Penn State. Move, move, Maurice French taking the opening play of the season back 91 yards for a touchdown. That's how you get, oh, smooth move, Heather Lycan Pitt for putting the entire student section across the back of the end zone. Another small but actually good move by Pitt. Yeah, that's a smooth move. I like it. Mine would have to be that Toledo player who got the punt, took it right in his gut, and turned it into a touchdown in two seconds. Never saw anything like that. Those are the smooth moves of the week presented to you by Armina Stone. Features Pittsburgh's largest indoor stone gallery of granite, marble countertops, 
imported from all over the world to give you the smoothest countertops in your neighborhood. Score a touchdown from Armina Stone. When we come back, Pitt Penn State Saturday. We'll get it on next.